All right, and we're live. So, yeah, so, whoa. Um, so, the last programming stream was actually a few days ago. So, I missed, I missed my uh, Friday stream. So, I'm sorry about that if anybody was, um, Wondering, wondering why I didn't stream on Friday. Something came up, so I didn't uh, didn't have an opportunity to stream Friday night. Um, so yeah, if if you're wondering why that day got skipped, um, yeah, I just didn't stream. You didn't you didn't miss anything. Um, but picking up picking up now uh, where I left off on Thursday's programming stream. And so I'm still working on the backend server for a messaging app. And what I have so far is I think I've implemented, like I've implemented the um, web sockets and I have messages going back and forth through, through the mess, uh, through the web sockets. And I realized as I was thinking about the kind of the architecture of of the server, is that I don't think I actually want the messages to go through the WebSocket. Um, it's I, I think what I'm going to do, and, and I, I don't know if I'm going to get to this um, tonight. But instead of so, so right now, I guess I'll just I'll just show what I have right now. Um, what do I, let's see. Yeah, so if I run this, and I go to localhost eighty eighty, and I pull it up again. So this should be user. I think this is user zero, so I'm sending it to user one. Oh, I guess I should. I don't know why I don't add the chats in here, but whatever. Yeah, so this is. Um, this is what's happening. This, this is all going through. So this is the data that's going through the um through the websocket so so the actual message is going through the websocket um so so the sender sends a message to through the to the server through the websocket and then the recipient receives the message through the websocket actually i want to now that i'm thinking about it, i i do want to i wonder why Why it doesn't append? Interesting. Anyway, I, I can work on that. What I'm thinking is that if you know, I sent this user sends the message, it it should probably show up here. But that's that that'll be worked out in the uh, in the client, like the real client. But anyway, so um. So I have all, all, all of this, all the message data is going through the WebSocket right now. And, and, and I did that just because that's how uh, the example I took from the WebSocket library that uh, Gorilla created, or that's in the Gorilla, um, I guess, toolkit. Um, that's how they did it. But as I was thinking about it, I think the better way of doing it is to not have all the data go through the WebSocket. The only thing that really needs to go through the WebSocket are, I mean, and it's not even like really the only thing that needs to go through the WebSocket are alerts that that a message has been received. So, so uh, alerts for the recipient. Um, so, if if a user is sending, if the user is sending a message. Then that user can just call a standard um, HTTP request, and then if a user wants to retrieve a message, uh, then the user can just call a standard HTTP request. the The, the only thing that really needs to uh, go over the WebSocket is an alert telling the user 
that they have a message that they need to retrieve. Um, so everything else, like like that, that and, and that's the only, and, and maybe some other alerts, but, but let's just, let's just go with alerts, like, like updates. So even, even, um, like, like read receipts or, um, what else is something like, like delivery receipts, uh, that kind of stuff. And, and maybe like the typing alerts, like somebody's typing, maybe that goes through the WebSocket. But, but again, like the whole message doesn't have to go through the WebSocket. Um, so, so I'm going to actually re-architect uh, this whole thing so that the WebSocket is really only used to deliver alerts and not whole, whole messages. But I don't know if I'm going to do that tonight. At the end of, at the end of last stream, I had talked about starting to work on, or that I wanted to start working on the database. And so I, you know, I, I installed Docker and I haven't, I haven't installed a, um, uh, I'll probably just use Postgres, but I haven't installed the Postgres container yet. So I need to do that. But I was thinking about going ahead and, and working on that and then coming back and re-architecting the the WebSocket so that's not actually sending um uh sending sending messages and then actually like so so and, and this is actually going to solve the other problem that I was having which is that right now it sends messages but it has to get the message type from the models um from the models uh, package, and I, I never liked this. I, I didn't actually like this. This, this seemed this seemed wrong that the the WebSocket had to call the had, had to get the message type from the models. And and so what what I'm probably going to implement in the WebSocket package is just an alert, um, an alert type, and then everything else will work like a standard, um backend, you know, HTTP server with, you know, get and post requests. So, but I don't think I want to work on that right now. I think I'm going to, I think I'm going to set up the database and see where that gets me. So yeah, so the database needs users and messages. So I'll work on setting up the database and then Depending, I, I might save the re-architect to, well, I actually, what I'll probably do is I will build out the other stuff, like build out the, the standard requests and then switch it over. So I, like, I, I might not even need to re-architect it that much. Um, or, or yeah, a anyway, I'll, I'll get to that, but I, I'm going to work on the database right now. So where is that going to go? I guess I can stop this. Um, so first I actually need to install the Docker container. So this is all like this. I don't think this will be on the screen, but um, oh, I do need to figure out which which Postgres? Yeah, here we go. So I think 13, yeah, 13 is the latest. Uh, Docker run Postgres dash D Postgres. So I'm also going to change the port, but I usually like dash dash name. Yeah, I'll create a, I guess I can, I can do this in Docker. Now I don't know whether, I won't put it here first. Um,
messenger what is it called messenger server all right and now i can do let's see let's just do let's go to ssh Uh, something got cut off. Oh, I know why. There it goes. Okay, Docker run name. Let's do Postgres Messenger Server. Postgres password, super secret password, one, two, three, four, dash D Postgres. Yeah. And then, oh, the port. Let's see. Oh, no, I know what I, it's just, um, well, maybe, is there an example here? Oh, and the mount. Custom mount. PG data. I don't need that. Dash V. Okay, I need to create some of this stuff. But I do want to change the port. Uh, I'm not going to worry about it. This is a test database. It doesn't matter. I can always change it later. Um, change ports. Let's see. Oh, it's just dash P. Okay, cool. Where is... Yeah, I actually like this. There it goes. Um, name Postgres message and server one, two, three, four. Don't need that one. Don't need that one. Dash P and it's um, what's the standard Postgres port? Prot. Five, four, three, two. I guess I don't need to change it. That's fine. It can. Um. Yeah. Let's. Ah. Uh, we'll just we'll just leave it as is. Okay. So. Let's see, Docker. Oh. Here we go. So now this should work. Um, denied. Yes, I forgot to do this. Um, okay, I'll have to do this on a different terminal
Okay. I just started on a different terminal. I forgot, like, the permissions are all messed up, but... I have them set, permissions set correctly in a different terminal. I just didn't do it on this one, so... Um, but it, it's running. And now I should just be able to do... Um... No existing cluster. What is the PSQL command? I think Docker's running. Yeah, it's running. Oh, you know what I forgot to do? I don't think I exposed the port. Yeah. There we go. I think I have to do that. Okay, now this should work. No. Client version package. Okay. Postgres, what is it called? Client, oh, Postgres. QL client. You must install at least one version. Okay. I think it's installing version 12, but... Cannot, no such file. There it goes. And we're in, okay. Warning, major version 12, server major version 13. Yes, okay. Okay, cool. So now, what am I going to do? Now I need to create a database. Messenger. And then... Okay. Okay. Well, that was, uh, that was easy. So now it's just a matter of, I think we can get to the programming part now, which is actually setting up. setting up the uh this is the where's the models yeah 
So now it's just about setting up the services and creating a service. And I've already done this, so I'm just going to copy what I've done. And let's see, okay, so this is going to be package models, services, taco. Cool. All right, so yeah, so this is just taking, um, this is the same kind of MVC type stuff that that John Calhoun goes over in his um, in his uh, training. No, SQL.db, I think is what it's called. Yeah. All right, so. So this is this is something that John. This is kind of like a, a what what do they call them? Like a not a paradigm, but not a model. I, I I don't know what the word I'm looking for, but just a way of structuring the the package so that it um. So you can set up a bunch of different services for your code and then let's see new services oh yeah okay then i have this add service i don't think i'll need that one but Yeah, so I have this bunk. And it'll become clear once I actually get back to the main um when I when I actually run this you'll see why this um programming principle or, or whatever is used. It makes the code a lot cleaner. So there's a couple ways I could pass this information in, or I'll probably do it the same way I did it before, which is 
probably have a configuration service. How do I do it here? No, I'm not going to do it this way. I know what way I'm going to do it. Yeah, no, okay. I am going to do it the way that it's typically done. Um, so there's going to be a host or user has dialect and name. And these are all strings. Oh no, this is, how do I do this? Hold up. Okay, nope, that's not going to work. Hey, 101, what's going on? Where would I have? Okay, I gotta remember how to do this. One second. Uh, let's see. I just need an example. SQL. Oh, the connection info. Yeah, I forgot about doing that. Okay. No, I think I should just be able to... Okay, I found it. So there's a couple things to do. So this needs to be, um, yeah, I think that's the typical, typical uh, library. Let's see. SQL.open. What is the dialect? Oh, I'm not going to have the config. Okay. Host port user password connect if config.name SSL DB name oh I know why because I don't actually need dialect okay um, yeah, so this will be Postgres, and, well, okay, whatever, I guess we'll keep it in there.
I don't know where that came from, but I'm pretty sure that's here. Be good if I actually commented stuff, I'd know what that was for. I can always change that later. All right, and then there needs to be a connection info right here, but this has to be built. Um, format dot. Printf. Yeah, okay, yeah. Yeah, 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 that's how, uh, yeah, that's how I usually do it. I have it over here somewhere. And I, I put a timeout. I don't know why I put a timeout. Yeah. What is this? If name host port user password database name there it goes i ping it before returning yeah yeah that's what it, that's what i do as well yeah host port user password DB name, SLA mode, connect, timeout. I don't know why. I think I was doing something. There's a reason why I added the timeout on a. I'm kind of copying this from a different program. There's a reason I added the timeout, but I can't remember why. That's okay. Um, so what? Host, port, user, password, name. Yeah. Okay. And then what's next? I think I was having issues. I was having issues with something with the database, or I thought it was with the database. And that's why I added the timeout, but I don't think it's necessary. All right, I won't add it for now. And so this goes, what's next? Oh, if there does not equal nil. Uh, what do I have? Fail to connect. Fail to database connection. And then we have what's that? Otherwise, it's return nil. Actually, what it needs to be is something gets set. S dot SQL database, I think. Uh, DB. SQL dot open. Oh, uh, no, that should be fine. Cannot initialize one variable with two values. Oh. Has R point. Oh.
There we go. Yeah, so that should be... I'll probably come back to this just to verify that I did it all correctly, but... Yeah, I think that's fine. Yeah, okay, cool. All right, so now we have the SQL database set up. Um, oh, so now that that's good, now I can actually run this in... Yeah, so this is the point of all of that. So now we can do something like this. Services error is equal to models.new. And I can do models.with SQL database. And I would just Let's see. Oh, well, that's not going to work. All right, so host is should just be local host or Five four three two users Postgres password is one two three four and this is messenger. Okay. So now the services should be set up. And if I check for the error, what is that going to be? Oh. Build to initialize services. All right. Okay, so now it should connect to the database. And now the other thing I need is the auto migrate, which auto migrate is just a way of setting up the database. And that needs to be in this. Yeah, so actually, what are the different tables? All right, so I have users and messages. With SQL database. And again, I'm, I'm going to kind of do this all here once, but I will most likely change how I do this. Um, in the future, I'm just trying to get it done. Let's see. So I want to create users query. And what is that going to be? So it's create table 
if not exists. Users. And then it's going to be ID big serial primary key. Okay, so what are we going to have? We're going to have username, text, I guess that's all for now. All right, and then we'll have a create messages query as well. Create table if not exists messages. Again, big serial primary key. And then there's going to be a need to be like a username or a user ID. Let's see how I do this. Big serial is big int. Oh, wait a minute. This is actually sender. And recipient, or actually, I know what I'm going to do to from. Yeah. And then we're going to have body text. Actually, I've already kind of defined all this. Where did I put that? Oh, I've put it here. So to from body. OK, so to from body. Okay, so now what do we do? Error. Actually, we'll do these afterwards. S dot equal database dot exec create users query terraformat dot era Oh, this is in models. Okay. Fail to create users table. All right, so now this should be possible. Now I should just be able to do services, well, error.
auto migrate, and that should just set up the. set up the database for me. Okay, so now if we run this, so right now, let me, um, so right now there are actually no tables. There are no tables in the database. But after I run this, it should set them all up. Uh, services 64. I guess I didn't run go bet. Oh, okay. Cool. Oh, and I actually realized it did something else wrong that I need to fix. Where do I put it? I think I put it up in here. Um, da, 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 this one. That's interesting. All right. Um, yeah, oh, here we go, John. John's got my back. Yeah, that's what I'm looking for. Uh, no required module provides package to add it. Oh. Auto migrate undefined has no field or method auto migrate. It does have auto migrate. Oh, I just spelled it wrong. I guess it would be like go vetted everything. Okay, something else. There it goes. Fail to automate models, fail to create messages table, syntax error at or near two. ID to from create table if not exists messages ID big serial is two is two reserved Reserved keyword in Postgres might be. Yep, must have been. Okay, cool. So now going over here, there should be tables. Okay, so we have tables now. Uh, we have tables in the, there's nothing in the tables, but the tables exist. So cool. Now there's also one other function that I want to there is yeah the 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 um 
destructive reset. That's also another function that that John creates. Uh, just to reset everything from the, from the, um, I think I'm just going to do this. Actually, is there a way I can do this all at once? So Postgres. Job table if exists. Example. Whoa. Job table if exists. Job table. Yeah. Okay. So. Let's see, so we have Oh, whoops. There it is. Four. Oh, no. Actually, I'm going to need this. Drop table if exists. People, how do I run this? SQL, let's see, drop table. Build to drop table. Oh, and then, um, no, what's the last thing that needs to happen? Yeah. Return s dot auto migrate. So destructive reset, what destructive reset does is it drops all the tables and then rebuilds them. So if you have, um, mainly if you have a bunch of test data that you don't want, it's just a way of easily, um, rebuilding the database from scratch. So you don't have to go into the database directly. This will just do it for you. So let me demonstrate. Oh, I need to add it to the code. Destructive. Destructive reset. Bill to reset database. And you actually don't need the 
you, you don't need that if you're using destructive reset. Because it auto-migrates automatically. Or it's automatic rights included in destructive reset. So uh, I was missing. Some oh, I wanted to add data. So I can. So right now, select star from users. There's nothing in users, but I can do insert into users uh, username. I think this is how. No, insert into username's value, test user. I think this is it. It'll throw an error if it's not. Syntax error, yeah. All right. Uh, insert, insert into table values, almost. Insert into users values. Okay, I'm still getting something wrong. Insert into values. Insert into users, username, values. Oh, I forgot Postgres. This is Postgres is really weird with these things single quotes instead of double quotes so now if i so i've just inserted a test user just to show okay so right now there's a user and i can you know i can add you know yeah i have three users in there so now what if if i do if i run this because i have destructive reset uh, in the code, it's going to uh, delete it all. So now there's nothing in there because it dropped the tables and rebuilt them. So most of the time, I mean, that's really only used in, I mean, I'm not even going to leave it in the code because it scares me. Um, but the, the, like for testing purposes or development purposes. It's just a way of uh, resetting the database really quickly. So now that the database is set, and there's a lot of stuff I'm missing from the users table, like especially like I'm going to need the, the session, I like session tokens and stuff like that, but I'll have to, I need to rem remember how to do all that. So what's next? So I have the database created. Yeah, log in, log out. So that's that's going to be a lot of stuff. Store messages until retrieved. Oh, actually, what I want to do is receiving store messages until received. So in the in the database, I need what messages table. I need a um, I need to add some columns. So red. Received timestamp, probably sent timestamp. Received timestamp. I don't know if I would need to receive timestamp. I 
and in the users table. Session ID, password hash. Um, created last activity. These are just like standard things that I can think of. Session ID, password hash, created last activity. Yeah. So WebSocket handler, yeah, this is, well, I do need to do that, but convert WebSocket to deliver alerts only. And so what are the alerts? The alerts are like, Probably like new message. Um, message read. Message delivered. New message, message delivered, message read. And what was the other one that I said? Oh, what was it? New message, message delivery. Oh, um, typing. That one's going to be tricky. I don't know if I want to do that one, but the other one should be fine. Oh, that's going to have to be the message read. Okay, we're not doing these two. And I'll explain why I'm not doing those two. So, slightly technical, slightly not. So, in order to do a message read or typing. So to do either of those, so, so, so new message. Okay. Let me, let me actually, I'm going to separate these out into mess alert types. So, so alerts, uh, these are sent to user from server. sent to server from user. Okay. So let me explain the difference between these two, these two sets of alerts. So a new message alert. So, so a message will come in and that gets sent to the user. So, so a user, you know, user A and user B, user A sends a message to user B so user B needs to be alerted. So the server will send an alert to uh, message B saying, you know, hey, there's a new message, come and get it. Uh, similarly with message delivered is that um, is that um, is that 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 um, that requires an alert. So, so when, once the server, when, once like let's say user B connects to the server, requests the message and pulls it down, then the server can send an alert to message A, hey, message delivered. 
to do message read and typing, which is where, you know, dots would come up if the user's typing, the client would have to send an alert. Like, like let's say user B is typing and user A is seeing that. User B, the client would have to send an alert to the server and then the server would send it to user A over the WebSocket versus um, just calling one of the HTTP requests. And while that is technically possible, so same with the message read, the client, like user, like if user B, I, I guess that could be done, that could be done, the read receipts could be done through uh okay maybe maybe this isn't as bad as i was thinking the the problem i initially had was i thought like these i don't necessarily like that i don't like that the client is initiating the data transfer like the, the client is initiating the alert based on a user action versus the new message alert is initiated from the server once it receives a new message from a client. So, but maybe, maybe it doesn't matter. Yeah, maybe I'll keep it. I mean, obviously the, there'll be an option in the client to disable it, but yeah, maybe that's okay. Message read and typing. I have to think about it, but I think Yeah, I think I think that'll be okay. That's fine. They'll just send an alert through the Okay. I mean that's what the WebSockets are for. So what's next? Um, so now I want to actually, so now I want to change it. I, I guess I'll get into this now. Why not? Um, there needs to be with SQL. Let me see how I do this. Yeah, okay, so now I can just do add the handlers so there's message how do i do this in the one Yeah, message service, that's what I need. Yeah, so what is that going to look like? Message service. I think it's just going to have a database in it. For now. 
And how do I do this? Yeah. Type. No, it's uh, funk new message service TV. Okay, so new message service, and now I need a funk with messages. Services config. Okay, it's bothering me that I can't think of this word. MVC design pattern. That's what it's called. It's a design pattern. Okay. Okay, so S dot message s is equal to new message service s dot sql database and it should just be return mail yep and now there needs to be a cool Okay, and then in the services, I need to do models dot with messages. What did I call it? With messages, yep. And it's actually very important that the DB, that the database gets created before messages. Otherwise, the database, um, the database variable pass to like this s dot SQL database will be nil, and it won't be created. It won't be instantiated. So the with SQL database needs to be called first in the order of creating the services. And so now we can do some controllers. And so now there will be a message controller. Um, I guess there's already a message controller. And the message controller is going to have a um, message service I guess I don't need yeah I guess that's fine
goes. Okay. Oh, and I already have a send. Um, yeah, that'll be fine. Send, parse form. So yeah, so now send is going to be... Send is actually, instead of going through the WebSocket, it's just going to be a standard HTTP request. That's going to... Oh, you know what I'm going to need, though? I'm probably going to need the the WebSocket hub in here as well. Is it, is this is going to have to call the this is going to have to be able to send the user an alert. Okay. Well, I'll figure that out later. New client controller. Yeah. yeah. This is the WebSocket. Okay. So what needs to happen first? So now there just needs to be a bunch of functions for the message service. Oh, you know why? Okay, so so John also has, let me see if I can find it. John has some interesting, some other design patterns that I didn't do. Where he uses interfaces. Yeah, okay, I may try to do that. All right, let's do that. New message service, yeah, message service. So, John, what does he do? Type. Message service interface. So the service itself is an interface, and then he. He maps that to, or he implements it using a different struct with a lowercase. And the purpose for doing this is to make it easier to implement different. If you want to change the model, it's you don't have to like the as long as you implement the interface, you don't have to change the actual uh, implementation of it. Or as as long as you yeah, as long as you know, you can create a new new type that implements the message service interface and basically the rest of your code doesn't have to change. So that's the point of it. Um, and it's this that has user DB. Yeah, I'm not gonna do that. And so this does not, this does not. Cannot, oh, hold up. What was the error? Service is 28, yeah. New message service, message S. So this is just message service now. Yeah. 
There it goes. Okay. So now it mess like the lowercase message service implements all the code while message service just remains the interface. And then I'll need to do the same thing for users. There will be a user service that looks very similar to this, at least in the beginning. Is right now the interface like, like there will be like this will have a. Um, it will have. Let me see. Yeah, there'll be like a send function. It'll be like to from. Actually, it'll probably just be message. That'll probably be what it is. So right now the uh, this actually breaks because lowercase message service doesn't implement this send. Actually, it's not going to be this. Well, no, it will be. Yeah, that's fine. To from body. Okay, so I have that, and then I'll probably have a user service. I'm not going to probably. I will have a user service. That looks very similar to this, at least, again, in the beginning. Oh, yes, and now I can delete this error, or at least I will. Yeah, okay. Delete error. Let's... Websockets are migrated to alerts. Yeah, so the... um. Yeah, I don't want to break this yet. This this is going to break it, but I guess I could break it now. No, I, I don't want to break it yet. But the the message the the message truck should should mirror the um ID probably int sixty four maybe to user from user body the the message truck needs to mirror the database which is. Uh, where's the database? Oh, it's in the services. So the database has ID to user from user body. And go add tags. Yeah, there it goes. And so the the only reason I added this air string is because that's what was getting set through the web sockets and it's not going to be anymore. I'm going to have alerts sent through the web socket and I'll, I'll I'll define that in the I guess I can do this here now. Whoa. Um 
Alerts.go. So what? There's going to be an alert. So there's going to be a type or not, not a type, but like a category. Maybe a type and then a message. And so now the only things getting sent are, oh, and actually I could probably change this whole thing. Um, yeah, I'm gonna do this now. Is that, I I I want to I want to fix the other one. Okay, so message. Yeah. So message actually okay. Oh, and now I need, this is what I need now. I need the, um, I had, oh no, it's in this one. The two string and the parse message. Yeah. And this is just going to be alert. Parse alert. Okay. So, yep. Array. Alert bytes return. Failed. No, 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 no. Yeah, I mean, this is going to fail now, which is fine. Okay, so I need to change all this now to use alerts, although it's not going to be, it's not going to be that good, but that's fine. Um, so. Okay, so everywhere we have, okay, message bytes. Oh, that's what it's called because read message is a quit. So parse alert, yeah, message bytes. Yeah, okay, I like that. And then two string. Message bytes. Turn message bytes. Although, ah, uh, man, okay. Ah. Uh, 
so now I'm getting I'm getting the vocabulary messed up. So I'm calling this I'm calling these alerts because that's how I think about them. Like, but the 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 terminology for the WebSocket is that a message is being sent over the WebSocket. I'm just calling the message an alert. So I'm actually gonna have to I'm gonna have to go through all of this. Okay, type and then alert. That's how I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna have to change all this back. Okay, well that's annoying. Well, I'm gonna do it the easy way. It's so a message to string RM. I think that's fine. And I need to rename this which I should be able to do are sort of, oh, whoops, uh, shift R. Let's see, message clients errors. It's just message. Okay. So this is a WebSocket message. But it's still not going to work. Yeah, because there's no... And now there can be an error in here. Yeah. There's not going to be a two, though. Cannot use of type, value of type as models.message. Yes. So now I need to change all of these to message. Not use literal type message as models.message. Not now it's getting created somewhere. There it is. Oh, no, 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 no. Okay, so now I'm kind of breaking all of this. I mean, this isn't going to be a problem, though. Let's see what I want. Error alert type. I don't necessarily need the res Do I need a recipient? I guess I do need a recipient.
Yeah, now I'm kind of... Do I need a two, though? I guess I will. So now I'm kind of breaking this because... Message broadcast... Message dot two. Okay, yeah, that's fine. Um, go add tags, JSON, mid empty. Okay, cool. Um, so that works. But now I have nothing setting the to field when a message is received. Oh, wait a minute. Why is... There it goes. So this is right. That's fine. Where's read? Here it is. All right, this is just going to become an echo. C dot client has username. This is just going to become an echo. Um, Yeah, this is just an echo now. Wait a minute, controllers of client dot go. Where is this? So this should actually break because, well, that doesn't matter. Is it's not going to be able to, oh, it didn't break. Huh. Why didn't that break? To body Okay, so now it's just an echo. 
which is fine actually because I don't actually need the web the web socket is simply between the um client and the server like it's not meant to send like the the alert isn't meant to go like like the websocket isn't going to be the means to send send or receive messages so um I'll, I'll figure out the other stuff but now what that means is that i can go back to i can fix this now well one i don't need all of this And I can get rid of this now. And now the message, the message struct in, in models looks how it should. So, so yeah, I, so I like this a lot better than what I had before. So before I, I was trying to use models, like the, the message struct in the models um, package as in the WebSocket, um, not being very... So the, so the WebSocket needed to send a message uh, back and forth between the clients and the server. And for whatever reason, and well, I know why, because that's how the example was from the Gorilla uh, library. Um, but once I realized that the WebSocket message needed to be different from the messaging app message, then that, that that that's just simplified a lot of things. So So I'm not going to worry about handling these now. But now I have this new message type, the the websocket message type and I can do whatever I want to this. So now there's no from because um you know, the alerts are between the client and the server, not between clients, uh, you know, one client and another client. And I like that. So, and, and I'll have some kind of like alerts and types. Like, so, so this is... Like some types might be, well, let's, let's just do, well, here, I'm not going to do it right here. I'm going to put it in my notes. Um, yeah, so alerts, oh, well, and then. You know, we might have types which are what info. Actually, I'm just going to copy the. What are the? Oh, React. Yeah, this is what I want. So, what are they? So, primary danger. So, info. Info and error, maybe. Yeah, info and error, I think, are good for now. Public error. Okay. Yeah, I, I I just like this 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 makes a lot more sense to me. I'm not breaking I'm not kind of like breaking the MVC pattern with these web sockets. Um 
I'm I'm keeping the WebSocket stuff separate from the from the actual web app. Like not not the web app, the actual um like HTTP handlers. Like the standard MVC patterns. So yeah, I think uh, I think I like that. I think I think that's a good stopping point. So I still have a lot of actually. Let me. Yeah, there we go. So I still need a user service a database. I do want to clean up the auto migrates. So what what were some of the things that I wanted to do? Um, I need to figure out how I do that for real. Oh, clean up auto migrate and clean up SQL database server. Oh, well, clean up, improve. And again, I'll just have to look how I've done it in other places. Okay. Yeah, I think that's uh I think that's pretty good. Like uh I like where all that is. And this, I'm just going to close. So yeah, I'll stop there. I'll stop there tonight. And uh, tomorrow, I don't know. I'll, I'll look up how I do the... the um, like I, it shouldn't be that hard to improve the stuff that I wanted to improve. I just, I just got to remind myself how, how I did it. Um, like the auto migrate and SQL database service. And then I might start working on some of the handlers, like maybe the user service. I'll, I'll work on the user service, like logging in, logging out, but I'm going to need a client for that. And I could make a web client, like a basic web client. Like, you know, right now there's a HTML page. So maybe I, I, I don't know if I'll do that. Yeah, I mean, we'll, we'll, we'll see. I, I don't know. I'll, it'll depend on what I want to get into. Um, yeah. Anyway, thanks for, uh, thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.